So the chapter, I waste my time and money, so you don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, here come the... Sorry, I got some, I got some difficulty to, to say the name and you will understand why. Helios Zoom 80-200mm F4. And I will tell you right away, I wasted 20 bucks. Because this zoom has so much issue, it's unbelievable. The aperture ring doesn't, uh, you see, I got the 22 after the, the red dot. And the maximum, this is the 8. I cannot turn anymore. Also, let's take the rubber here. Ta 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 ta, abracadabla. Here. <laughs> oh la 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 la. Unbelievable. They put some tape on it. You will say that the pool or. You cannot see the lettering. Here. Take a look at that. Oops. Alright. You see the fingers? And I'm pretty sure that I will not be able to repair it. I don't have enough loan knowledge about it. So, but at least I will try to clean up the optics. And anyway, we will take this opportunity to talk about the history of this lens. Because, long story short, this is not an Helios. Seriously. It has the Helios name on it, the KMZ logo on it, but the reality is that this lens is a real fake Soviet lens. Don't say that. The Soviet had almost nothing to do with it. This lens is actually... Okay, let's go back in time. iPhone. Smooth. <laughs> For Muhammad Ali. 1962. A British import-export company named TUI, Technical and Optical Equipment, became the only authorized British importer of Soviet cameras and microscope equipment in UK. An interesting fact, the Russian Foreign Economic Association, in charge of the import-export of the Soviet high-tech equipment, praised TOI as the biggest buyer of Soviet steel, camera and lens and also binoculars. That might explain why TOI was granted the right to use the brand Helios and KMZ logo on some models not made by the Soviets, such as the pump zoom. So to summarize, let's say this 80-200mm is simply one of the Japanese children of a Russian British knight. The question is, who was the Japanese manufacturer of this zoom? Few Japanese companies were subcontracted by TOI, but the main manufacturer of all these fake Soviet lenses was the South Korean company Samyang. I can say without taking any risk that this push-pull telezoom was manufactured by Samyang around 1983 under many different brand names. By many, I mean a lot, such as Prospect, Saka, Sir, Kalima, Gisepeni, Nikura, Albina, Greg Optics, Zico, Stardy, Sirius, Ritzkan, Samyang of course, and yeah, Helios. Are you serious? Hey, yeah. Side note, I will clamp the optic with one mixed isopropyl alcohol. This one is hard, this is 99%. So you have to mix it. And the bad boy, hydrogen peroxide. This one is 30%. And I will tell you something. Be careful of that. The 30% will melt your glove. I use it on one Canon FL lens and it just damaged the coating of the lens. You have to mix it with water. I mean, 30% is too much. It's definitely too much. Don't put that on your skin one uh, YouTube channel, I think the name, this is D.I. Uh, Extravaganza. I will put the link. And he had one mixed. 70% of uh, water, 25% of isoprol alcohol, and 5% of hydrogen peroxide. So I made my own mixed. 
So far, so good. So here we go. Talking about fake Soviet lenses, Pierre Tizian, who is quite a big deal about Soviet optic history on YouTube, wrote a piece about it, tilted the Soviet lenses made in Japan, where he gives you indication to recognize the Soviet lens made in Japan, like the Soviet manufacturer never used number with uppercase N and lowercase O before the serial number. Also, they never used the word automatic, and they never colored the brand name it was one Japanese run. Except a couple of models, the Soviet only used the metric system, not the imperial. And let's finish by the mega elephant in the room. The USSR never made one extending zoom. Now I guess that some of you are wondering why I bought it. Listen, my friends, I only discovered the wall fakery after I had received the lens. And if I knew all that before, uh, anyway. For now, this is just a pet project to practice and sharpen the skill. Now let's wrap up. About the image quality. It is basic, nothing special, lack of sharpness, no character, the color are just uh, okay. The bokeh is chaotic, messy. This lens will definitely not make any comeback soon. Save your money. Even if you can have it for cheap, save your money. Alright, I think we are done now. Let's move on. Bye-bye.